little bit lazy, so please forgive me, but I promise I'll get those printed out because I want us to have a, a, a little, um, for lack of a better word, a, a timeline of where we're going in this series, okay? And it shouldn't be too off because we, we've been with Abraham for quite some time now, but we're about to, I'm a little sad because we're about to leave Abraham. I was saying when we left Noah, now we're about to leave Abraham shortly. I'm a little sad about that. We're going to get it knocked out. Genesis 24, amen? Yeah. Genesis 24. On your Bibles, iPads, phones, pages, beepers, magazine, what are you, whatever you, TV, whatever you're using to find your scriptures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Genesis 24, King in. At verse number one, it says, And Abraham mm -hmm. was young. Oh, oh, I'm just old. making sure everybody on the same old, page. Old. Abraham was old and what? Oh, my Lord. Don't it, it must be nice. Amen. Well, stricken in age. And guess what? Not only that, the Lord had blessed Abraham in all. Things. We can have a benediction. All right, it's time to go. It's time to go. The Lord had blessed Abraham in what? All, all things. See, when we're walking with the Lord and we're Doing what's pleasing in his sight, this is the confidence that we can have in him. Right. But if we know, ah, I've been given 60%. Some days I've been given 45, 50%. There's that confidence is shattered. Yeah. But when we're doing what the Lord, when our mind is staying on the Lord and doing what? Wanting to please him. Yeah. Being about our father's business. Mm -hmm. It says the Lord blessed Abraham in all things. And that's the confidence that we can now have because of Jesus Christ. That means yeah. whatever we touch, it should prosper. Whatever we set our minds to do and whatever we set our hearts upon, it should prosper, not because of us, but because of the Lord's blessing. That's a confidence that we can have because we serve him and we recognize we belong to him. And as we say in Sunday school, the Lord is concerned about everything that concerns us. So I don't care if it's a mental thing. I don't care if it's something in our health, if it's a relationship, if it's financial related, whatever it is. The Lord is concerned about you. The Lord cares about you. And he's going to make sure that you're covered in every area. Whole. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Whole. So the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. As Abraham's nearing the end of his life, the scripture says that he said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites mm -hmm. among whom I dwell. Mm -hmm. Abraham is getting old. Now, y'all allow me to be a dinosaur at this point, right? Because I know this kind of thinking is outdated. Nobody thinks like, like this anymore. Mm -hmm. But in these times, it was the father's responsibility to find his son a wife. Hey, one amen and one yes, sir. That's it. Thank you, Brother Mike and Pastor. That's it. Just one amen. I know our times are different. But these kind of things were important. And what Abraham is telling his servant is, I know who I live around. I don't live around people that know who the living God is. So I can't give my son Isaac one of the women of this strange land. He's about to tell him, I need you to go back to my people, my kindred, my people that would know what to do in this situation. But under no circumstances are you to get a wife for my son from among these people. Why is that important? Because a father has uh, uh, guidelines. He has, um, he, can't, he can't be swayed by good looks, so to speak. Oh, come on, y'all. Come on, man. Why y'all being so spiritual deep on me? Do I got to take off my glasses so y'all can take me serious? See, we know how we do. We, oh, that's the one. Bro, Martin, we look, we looking. We, everything else we can figure out. She bad. She bad. So everything else I figure out after that. That's the one I want. Y'all know how Samson was. That's what got Samson killed. Every time Samson saw a fine woman, he was like, oh, I got to have her. Abraham had standards. Yeah, yeah. See, the scripture says when Abraham 
and God were having this conversation about Sodom and Gomorrah, the scripture says, shall I hide from Abraham the thing that I shall do, knowing how he shall command his children after me to keep my commandments? Abraham was the friend of God. So he knew that Abraham would keep his children in line with the word. That started by making sure he had a wife that represented the Lord at home. Amen. By the way, since we're here, I didn't plan on talking about this, but since we're here, you do know we're called the bride of Christ, right? Yes, sir. And just like the father had to prepare a bride for his son, yes. who do you think is preparing the bride oh, for the Christ? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, at some point, God, the father, is going to say, okay, son, go get your, go get your bride. That's right. go, it's time. It's time. Right. Go get That's your bride. Right. I'm sorry, y'all. I got sidetracked. Where am I at? Verse 4? <laughs> he tell, well, I'll, I'll hit the B portion of verse 3. He says that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell, but you shall go to my country, to my kindred, my people, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And a servant said to him, well, peradventure, perhaps this woman will not be willing to follow me to come back to this strange land. Do I need to bring your son again to the land from which thou camest? Oh, goodness, hallelujah. This is what I'm going to be talking about today, y'all. So pardon me for getting excited. Listen to what Abraham says. Under no circumstances, <laughs> for lack of a better way of putting it, he says in verse 6, Beware that thou bring not my son there again. The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and who spoke to me that I, and that swear to me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. Guess what? He's going to make preparation. He shall send his angel before thee, and ye shall take a wife unto my son from this. And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then you'll be clear from this mouth. But guess what? Under no circumstances do you bring my son back to that place. And the servant put his hand on the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swear to him, Concerning that matter. I'm going to talk today about God's deliverance. Okay. God's deliverance. Yeah. Under no circumstances, Abraham says, do you bring Isaac back to Ur of the Chaldees. Why? Because God had delivered me from that. So there's no reason to bring my seed back into that line of thinking. God has delivered us. The enemy's job is to get us to go back. <laughs> Simple as that. God has provided salvation. The enemy's job is to get us to neglect it. Abraham had, being a man of principle, he understood Isaac has never known earth. Abraham knew earth. Place where they were serving false gods, yeah. doing everything anti God, no knowledge of a, the uh, living and true God. Mm -hmm. Isaac had never known that. When we see Isaac in the scripture, Isaac is being obedient to his father. He's being obedient to the rituals of the sacrifice and the rules of the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. He's serving God. He's meditating in the field. He's being chastised for being chosen. Mm -hmm. We everything we see about Isaac is positive. Isaac may be the most positive, unbelievable person in the whole Bible because it ain't nothing negative ever said about Isaac. We got negative stuff about Abraham. We got a whole bunch of stuff about Jacob. Isaac just be chilling, minding his business, doing what God said. But he never could get to that point if his father didn't, wasn't a man of principle and then prepare. So he tells his servant, when you go to get a wife for my son Isaac, you, under no circumstances, bring him back to that place. And all God is saying, go forward. I've delivered you. The, the past that you have, the past that's behind you, leave it there. The enemy is called the false accuser of the brethren. That's right. That's right. Because he's constantly bringing up to God, well, Jamal did this. Uh, Jamal did that yesterday. You, sure. you still going to declare him righteous? You still going to love him? You still going to save him? What? Hold on. He's constantly bringing up our past to get us to, to be a victim of that, to be guilty of that. No, and no. Jesus is waiting with open arms saying, I got the blood right here. Come to me. Come to me. Let me show you a better way. Let me show you how to walk in my divine deliverance. 
See, the enemy can't take control of our future, y'all, unless we give it to him. That's why the scripture says, do not give place to the devil. I don't care what's in your past. I don't care what the enemy tries to hold over your head. That's old stuff. That's things that the Lord has declared dead. The scripture says, Lord, just toss my sin as far as the east is from the west. And he said, I'll do it. Scripture says also, blesses, blesses the man to whom the Lord will not impute iniquity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Lord has delivered us from our sins, from our trespasses. And now he allows us to walk in what the Bible calls newness of life. Yes, sir. What does that mean? That means old things are passed away. I'm a new creature. I'm something that never existed before. Yeah. The world has never seen my kind. Because they look at me and say, well, why you just didn't go back and get that person? Why you didn't just revenge yourself? They right there. Just go back and get them. It doesn't make sense in the natural. See, the way we behave, we're behave, literally behaving as a creature that has never existed on this planet. So when people see it, they are in awe to immediately go against it and contra contradict it because it's not traditional. It makes no sense that this person slapped me in my jaw and has been praying on my downfall, has robbed me of all my money, has cursed me out and called me every name in the book, and I still say, Lord, help this crazy individual. They don't know no better. Save their soul. When I got you right here, I see your back turned to me. I come right here with this brick and just knock you out and make a clear escape. It doesn't make sense in the natural. So the Bible calls us a new creation. Old things passed away, but we're walking now by the spirit, not after the flesh. That's right. So that means those that walk in the flesh still cannot please God. Right. Deliverance has caused the chains of the flesh and the chains of sin that had us bound, that messed with our mind, that had me just to the point where I, oh, Lord, I got to get them back. Oh, Lord, I'm going to get them. See, although that's called a chain, I can't get out of it. I don't know how to get out of that mindset. The Lord provides deliverance. Yes. So what does that have now that I'm a spiritual creature? My prayer is increased. My meditation is increased. Yeah, my yeah. walking in love, who I'm hanging around, the people around me are encouraging me to be better. So yeah. now I can say, oh, Lord, let them, let them go that way. Help them, Lord. They don't know. Help them. Forgive them, Lord. Let yeah. me be a light to them. Right. That doesn't make sense to the natural. But the scripture says, in doing so, you will heat coals of fire right. upon their head. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Meaning you might just light the fire and be the reason that they yes, come sir. to God. Yes, because you're not giving them what they deserve. You're giving them this little thing that we call um, mercy. See, I know what I deserve. The Lord knows what I deserve. He knows my lifestyle. He knows that I should have been condemned a long time ago. He knows I've done everything in the book to go to hell right now. Yet, the scripture says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly, not for his friends, not for those that wanted to serve him, but for people who didn't even know who he was. That's who Christ died for. That's the revelation of the love of God. This is what we talked about last week, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. God's love is seen in the fact that he gave himself when nobody held a gun to his head and made him do it. He gave himself over something called L-O-V-E, which we don't even know if he doesn't give Jesus. The origin of love is God. So when I'm loving the world, when I'm loving you, when we're loving one another, again, the world cannot know that. They don't know what that love is because that love comes strictly from God. Yes, sir. Amen. It has not existed before in the world. It is a revelation. That's right. So we cannot love God or love each other if we're not born again. Yeah. 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 True. And then as we become born again, John tells us that if we hate our brothers, we can't say that we're in the family of God. That's right. That's right. We have to. That's who we are. It's a part of who we, who we become. Meaning, I gotta forgive you. That's right. I gotta be uh, worried about if, if you're if you have enough food to eat, if you have uh, something to drink. That that's the love of God in me. It's not gonna let you go without. That's right. Mm -hmm. My spirit will be disturbed if I know my brother or sister are out of pocket. Mm -hmm. 
If I know I've done something, or even if I feel like I haven't done something, but I know you're offended by me right now, it, that love is going to make me seek you out to say, hey, how can I make this right? Yeah. That's why the scripture tells us if, if you're at the church and you want to give a, a gift and you want to offer something to the Lord, don't even worry about it, bro. Don't just, no, nah, don't worry about that. Go find that person that you need to make it right with. If you think they got all against you, go find them. But again, in the natural, this makes no sense. That's why I'm talking to spiritual people. Your flesh is going to say do the opposite. Oh, they ain't speak to me? Forget them. Forget them. I don't need them. They must not know who I am. But your spirit. Lord, let me be a light in a dark world. Help me to love people the way you love. Excuse me. I'm sorry, y'all. I got off on a whole different path. Let's go to Exodus 14, because I'm supposed to be talking about deliverance. Exodus 14. <laughs> Just then, y'all yeah, told y'all that Wednesday. I was supposed to be saving my preaching voice, but today, they got me all excited Wednesday, and now I'm, I feel like I'm about to give out. I didn't put so much into it. So I need the Holy Spirit to help me get on and finish this. How many minutes I'm at, Brother Jake? Oh, you're not back there. Never mind. Don't worry about it. I'll tell myself. Exodus 14. Um, we might as well start at the beginning, y'all. And I'm going to try to pace myself quickly through this. Because I want to show us God's deliverance and how, again, the enemy will use different tactics to keep us from our future. Right. You do not know what God has planned for your life. Mm -hmm. Like when we get saved, we, we put ourselves in this box thinking, oh, well, this, I told y'all when I got saved, I thought, well, I came from here and I'm just going to be here. Oh, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. This is cool. Like I went from being over here to being over here. But in actuality, God was trying to give me a seat. I'm taking you from here all the way to the moon. But that comes as God reveals himself to us. We, we sometimes don't know. Sometimes we just get our thinking. We think, oh, this is what it means to be saved. But really, God is like, if you just get on my back, get on these eagle's wings, I'm going to take you to heights you could never see. I'm pretty sure you hear Aunt Lisa testify all the time. She's 82 years old. But I'm pretty sure when she got saved, she didn't know that this was what life was going to look like at 82. But the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. The pastor said, I've been young, I've been old, but one thing I've never seen is the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. God will take care of you when you walk uprightly before him. When your life honors God, he will move heaven and earth to come see about you. That is a guarantee and a promise that you can take with you to the grave. You don't have to worry about people. You don't have to worry about circumstances. You can trust and do this little thing where the old people used to say, you can bank on it. You can rely on God. Deliverance is available. I'm reminded, y'all forgive me, I know I got to get to Exodus 14. But I'm, I'm reminded of how when David had every opportunity to kill Saul, Yes, Saul yeah. was, and, and I'm talking about God's deliverance, not allowing our past to determine or deter us. Right. Being That's spiritual, right. spiritually minded, yeah. knowing that it's going to pay off. Yeah. Right? Yeah. David was on the run. He had got anointed, just yeah. like I said, he had been anointed in front of his brothers. Yeah. Well, the problem with David being anointed king is what? Yeah. There was already a king. Yeah. So King Saul. Hated David. Yeah. David would come in, you know, he was a young, young cat, play his little harp, take the harp out of the bed, smile. He was a good looking guy. Everybody, hey, how y'all doing? He'd come in, play his little harp. Everybody, hey, David. And he would just, the whole room would be mesmerized by David. They would leave, all right, y'all, I'm going on back. See y'all. Yeah. It'd be time for a war. David come look. Hey, we losing the war. What's going on? <laughs> oh, let me go get my slingshot. He'll come back, kill about 10,000 people. They'd be like, oh, thank you, David. All right, y'all. See y'all later. The Lord was with David. 
So Saul hated him. And the Lord sent an evil spirit to Saul that tormented him. And every chance he got, he was trying to figure out a way to kill David. See, when you change and when you start glorifying God in your life, people are going to have a problem with that. People that you've been close to your whole life, that have known you since you was yay high. They will try to deter you from changing because they want you to be just like them. Who do you think you are? Do you know what we do? Oh, now you, you think you're better than us. David was evolving and growing in God. Saul was going down on him. But this is the reason I brought that up. Every time Saul tried to kill David, the Lord delivered him. And it would come a time when David could kill Saul. Yeah, yeah. He had him right there, yeah. him right past him. Yeah. He was nodding off. He had just watched the Roman drop 30. The Lakers had just won the game. He had had some pizza. And he went to sleep. Because Saul was a Lakers fan, just like David was. Everybody liked him. Don't worry about it, Brother Marcus. I'm just telling you. That's in the scripture. I'm just telling y'all what the scripture say. Don't get mad at me. So he caught, David caught Saul nodding off one day. And he could have killed, this man that tried to kill Saul billions of times. I mean, this man tried to kill David billions of times. And rather than David exacting revenge on him. See, the Lord said vengeance. That means we don't get to see it in the Lord's seat. No matter how much somebody has done something to us, no matter how right we think we are in condemning them and throwing them into oncoming traffic, the Lord says, keep your hands off of that. Keep your hands off of that. Because if you start exacting revenge, guess who's going to judge both of y'all? The Lord. But when you learn how to keep your hands off people, pray for people. Love them in a way that God loves you even when you're wrong. And let God be with them, whether it be good or bad, you can live with that outcome. But rather than killing the Lord's anointing, they would just cut off a piece of the skirt to let him know, hey, bro, you know, you know I had them, them people with me. We was all there, and I could have got you. But I let you live to show my righteousness. And when you show off your righteousness before the world, God can honor that. When you have the opportunity to exact revenge on people that you know have done you harm. It meant to destroy your morale, your soul, your family, your money, everything about you they wanted to destroy. They wanted to destroy. And you see, you still say, Lord, I'm going to be righteous toward that person. Yeah. See, the Lord can work with that. Oh, yeah. the, the Lord can operate with that. Yeah. And David was honored by God throughout his whole life. That's why when we look at David and we see what David did, this, David, he was a man after God's own heart. He followed the word of God. Even when it didn't seem like he should, he still trusted God. And when he was wrong, he repented and got it right. Because he believed in the word of the Lord. He believed in obeying God. And that's the mindset we got to have. If we just rely on God, he'll figure it out. We don't have to try to figure it out. He got it covered. Amen? Amen. In Exodus 14 and 1, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Pihahiroth. Man, that's a hard Hebrew word. I hope I didn't mess it up. Between Migdal and the sea, over against Baal Zephon, with, uh, before it shall ye encamp by the sea. Why? For Pharaoh will save the children of Israel. They are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. It's a very familiar scripture where I'm going. And guess what God said he's going to do? I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them and I will give my honor or I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts <clears throat> that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people and they said, why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. <clears throat> and he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. 
And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And the Lord pardoned the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out how? Now we know the story that the children of Israel had been slaves where? In Egypt. Is that right? I'm not hearing them from this side of the room. Is that right? Okay. Is that right? Huh? Okay. And so the Egyptians came to themselves. They were like, we can all this free labor. We got these people here serving us. Why in the world would we let them go? The Lord had hardened Pharaoh's heart. And the way that the Lord is going to deliver them and get glory, Pastor, Pastor Washington sometimes says that the Lord wait till 11, 59, 59. Why? Because that's the way the Lord gets his glory. See, if we do it in our time, we can say, oh, I did that. But when it's 11, 59, 59, our hands up in the air. We're like, oh, it's over for us. But that's when the Lord shows himself strong the most. Sometimes, again, we just got to learn how to let go. I know it's not the easiest thing to do. But as the saying goes, let go and let God, <clears throat> that's what we have to do. <laughs> I'm going to let Pastor read so I can save my voice. Verse 9, because I want to get through this chapter and I'll be done. Verse 9. But the Egyptians pursued after them, <clears throat> the horse and chariots of Pharaoh, and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them in camping by the sea, beside Pihakara. Before Belzephoth. And the Pharaoh did not. <laughs> no, I said, I'm sorry, I'm making you, I'm, I, I picked you up at the hardest part. That's all right. Thank you, Pastor. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were so afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, thou hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore has thou dealt thus with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt? We're going to pause right there and then come back. But this, this is what happens when you're born again, or when you first get saved, right? Or even when you make up in your mind, I'm going to be serious about the word of God, right? Israel had been granted deliverance, because that's what we're talking about. They had become Egypt representing the world. They had been taken from Egypt to a place that God had promised them called what? Canaan. The land of Canaan, the one with milk and honey. This, again, Egypt representing the world, representing slavery, the chains of sin, salvation coming, deliverance coming. I'm going to give you a land that you didn't have anything to do with, but it's going to be houses you didn't build, vineyards you didn't plant, representing our salvation. So our deliverance happens a little something like this. We're bound by the chains of sin. God delivers us. He doesn't just save us, but he gives us what we call the abundant life. Not just vineyards we didn't plant, houses we didn't build, but what he gives us is what? Joy, peace, love, all of the things that we could never imagine when we were in the world. See, a person that's not saved can't really fathom what it's like to have a peace that passes all understanding. They don't know how you can get bad news and then still lift holy hands into the Lord. It doesn't make sense. Again, in the flesh, these things are just not going to make sense. We have to be spiritual. So the Lord, when he provides deliverance, the enemy's job is to immediately come in, as Jesus said, and steal the word. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, the Lord ain't going to deliver you. You thought you was going to get saved. You thought he was going to help you. No, nah, you don't have it. So the morale of the people began to go down because they began to say to Moses, man, you brought us out of Egypt just to kill us out here in the wilderness? We have to ask ourselves, when we get into certain situations, what, what's our morale like? What's our mindset? Am I going to give up hope, and am, or am I going to trust God? That's right. All right, where we at? Verse 12. Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been, for it had been better for us to, to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. Yes, meaning I'd rather be a slave than a sacrifice for the Lord. And that's what a lot of people, that's the mindset. I, I'd rather be a slave to the world than do the sacrifice that requires coming to church, serving the Lord, treating my enemies good when I know I don't want to, loving people, 
sacrificing, giving of my time, giving of my talent, giving of my treasure. I'd rather skip all that and just be a servant to the world because it's easier. Mm -hmm. Oh, you remember the Matrix movie? If you don't, I'll give you a refresh. Bro, man, I know you've seen the Matrix. The Matrix. Y'all remember the Matrix? Mm -hmm. Pastor, I know you just don't know the movies. But in the Matrix, the Matrix was a system, right? Mm -hmm. Where James, I probably should let you do. Where James could have explained in the movies. But the, in the Matrix, it was a system set up, but it wasn't real. It was the real world where everything was shown how it really is in reality, but then you had the matrix, which is just you're in this robotic state almost. Everything seems normal, it seems great, you're living life, you're enjoying life, but in actuality, it's not like that at all. And so the people had an opportunity to leave the matrix. And this one guy in particular, <laughs> he had the opportunity. You can be free from the matrix. But he, one of the things he said was, man, this steak just tastes so good. It don't taste like this outside the matrix, so I'd rather just stay in the matrix. And that's how it is. The, the world system feels so good to our flesh and it has that fleshly appeal that we don't want to leave it. We don't know how to leave. It's all we've ever known. And when the Lord comes in and says, well, let me pull you out of it, guess what happens? We, we have to start from square one, so now it's a little rough, it's a little tougher, it's not as easy as it was in the Matrix, and at the first sign of trouble, we say, oh, let me go back to Egypt. Because it's gonna, it's gonna require some work, guys, like, I wish I could tell you, once you get saved, all of the fairy dust comes down from heaven, and you're just walking on clouds, that's not how this thing works. You gotta make some sacrifice. Yeah. You gotta go through some trials and tribulations. You gotta leave some stuff behind. You gotta know how to walk with God even when you can't see a way and trust and know that he's gonna make a way. And as you do that, you will grow to know who the Lord is and thereby revealing who you're supposed to be. But as long as, again, everything just laid out, the red carpet, how are you gonna know who the Lord is if you never have any real opposition? How are you gonna really learn how to trust God if everything happens that you're snapping. Sometimes you're going to have to go through the hard times to get to the other side. That's what makes it worth it. All right, verse, what am I, Pastor? 13. 13. And the Lord said unto the people, fear ye not. Stand, Stand still, yes. see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again, again no more, no more forever. forever. And that's the mindset you have to have. When the Lord delivers you, that old life that the enemy keeps trying to bring up before you and those old past mistakes and sins, the Lord is saying, this deliverance that I'm going to give you, okay. you will never see that life again. Thank you. Get on my back. Roll with me. Yes, sir. This is the, the deliverance that I'm providing. Yeah. This is what he's trying to get the Israelites to see. Now, you have to think about it. They had been slaves in Egypt. They had the pain, the heartache, yeah. the bondage. So when the Lord says, these Egyptians that you're seeing, this old life that you're reminded of, uh -huh. he's saying, I'm coming to take that away from you. Yeah. I'm literally coming to give you a life that you could have never seen the day before. Yes, yeah. right. And the Lord is saying, just increase your faith. Just reach out to me. Trust me. Yeah. And let me just show you. Yeah. Let me show you the land that I've prepared yeah. for you. I know it's hard. I know you don't see a way out right now, but just... Follow me, have faith, and trust that I'll work it out. That's right. And that's what the Lord does. When we got saved again, how, would we have ever thought that the Lord could do all the things that he's done for us? Amen. Verse 14. The Lord shall fight for you. You yeah. shall hold your... Hey, when, when, when they tell us to sit down and shut up, mm -hmm. our parents used to tell us that. Yeah. Hey. Sometimes we need to learn. Sit down. Shut up. The Lord is telling us, stand still. Hold your peace. Be quiet. Get out the way and let me work. The Lord will fight for us. We do know it's the Lord that fights for us, right? That's the importance of holding our peace and being spiritual warriors. Not allowing our flesh to always constantly take over. Not allowing the first thing that pops up in our mind to be blurted out. Hold your peace. And see what God will do. 
<laughs> y'all gonna never let me get off, do y'all? Y'all gonna always get me. Y'all gonna always get me. Verse 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou to me, speak unto the children of Israel. That they do what? Go forward. Go forward, man. Not back. Not back to your past. Go forward where deliverance is. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I'm going to stop there and I'm going to skip down because I want to wrap this up because I, I know we're familiar with this story. But the one thing I wanted to bring out in God's deliverance, my favorite little piece of all that is, is God assuring them that the Egyptians you see today, mm -hmm. you'll see them no more forever. Mm -hmm. And that's how we have to treat it because the enemy is going to constantly be trying to come up yeah. to get us to go back. To get us to, to revert back to what we know. Like in, in hardships, the easiest thing is to revert back to what's normal. To, to go back to whatever is comforting, whatever, whether it's a vice, whether it's an environment, whether it's the people. That's the first thing that we do because that's what's comforting to our flesh. Right. And so God is saying spiritually, I need you to step away. Like I need you to break away so that I can show you another way. And this right here will not just be a temporary fix like we talked about in Sunday school. It's not going to be just a temporary fix, which is sometimes what we rely on. This is right here is going to give you a sustained and long term. Yeah. God is saying th this is what's going to work long term for you to be sustained through the ups and downs, through the hills and valleys of life. Yeah. Because everybody wants the quick fix. Yeah. That's right. we, again, we, that, that's the easiest thing to do. When, when trouble arises, let me revert back to what's comfortable. Let me get around the people that make me feel a certain way. Let me let me have the vices that, that give me that temporary uh, pain relief. Yeah. And God is saying, just, just trust me. Yeah. Walk with me, and I will show you a salvation that you've never experienced before. Yeah. Yeah. I will give you a deliverance that's long-term ter long term and not just temporary, yeah. where you have to wind up back in the same position. Yeah. Hold my hand. Walk with me, and I promise you, through the hills, through the valleys, I'm going to be, be with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Lord, I'm with you to the end of the world. That's what God promised us. That's something we can rely on. That's to be banked on. If we just have faith. It's been many nights. I said, now, Lord, especially when I got saved. I said, now, Lord, I, I see this one's over. It's over this time. I didn't jack myself up again, Lord. I didn't have, I'm back right in the same position. But guess what? Life goes on as you are disturbed. Yeah. Keep on living. Keep on living. The Lord will be there for you. Yeah. Through all of the circumstances yeah. of life. And we have to rely upon him, not upon our own selves. That's right, that's right. I'm going to skip down uh, to verse 24, and then we'll be done after this session. All right. And it came to pass, oh, thank you, Pastor. I think I can handle this from here. Right. Since I'm about to, and I appreciate you. <clears throat> and it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. Guess what God did? Mm -hmm. He took off their chariot wheels. Mm -hmm. Now, Egypt was the world power. Mm -hmm. There has never been a nation like it before yeah. or after. We still excavate in Egypt. It seems like Tuesday. They still trying to open up tombs and do all kinds of stuff. Like, hey, man, like, that stuff wrong. But this wasn't just any empire is what I'm saying. And so when God delivers us, he's not just delivering us from anything. He's providing the greatest possible deliverance right, right, right. from a circumstance and from a set of life, uh, from a, a life that seems like we never could have escaped it. Yeah. That's what the Lord is delivering us from. Yeah. So when you see the chariot wheels come off, he's not just any chariot wheels. He's wheels of Egypt. Yes, sir. Nothing like them in the whole world. Mm -hmm. This is Mercedes Benz before there was ever Mercedes Benz. Yeah. So the Lord troubled their wheels mm -hmm. and they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel mm -hmm. for the Lord mm -hmm. for the Lord fight it for them. Yes, the Egyptians. Yes, and when your enemy starts saying, yes, I got to leave him alone, yes, the Lord is with him. Yes, Who wouldn't want that testimony? Yes, but you're not going to get that trying to get out there like you Roy Jones Jr. 
trying to fight on your own. Yeah. The Lord said unto Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, mm -hmm. upon their chariots, upon their horsemen. Mm -hmm. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared. Mm -hmm. The Egyptians tried to get away. They fled against it. But guess what? Mm -hmm. The Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots, the horsemen, all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon a dry land yeah. in the midst of the sea. Hallelujah. Amen. And the waters were walled to them on their right hand and on their left. The last verse, thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. Yeah. And guess what? Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. Yeah. And that's how we have to see our past. Mm -hmm. Dead. Yeah. Old yeah. things past the Lord. Be excited oh. about what the Lord has for you yeah. going forward. Be excited as a spiritual being, as a spiritual person. Lord, what will you have me to do? I'm excited because I know it's going to be something that's pleasing to you and will help my brothers and sisters. Lord, what will you, what do you want me to do? Not my own will. Lord, let your will be done in my life. How can I be better to serve you? That's what the Lord wants. A desire to please him and to be a help to others. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you. We come in the name of Jesus.